Welcome to the Soul of Islam radio podcast with Ahmed Saqa Amini and Ihsan Alexander. The Islamic Renaissance has begun. May the peace, the mercy, the blessings, and the light of the divine be upon you all. My name is Ahmed and I am a physicist, a poet, and deeply committed to the reawakening of the human mind and heart through art, science, and spirituality. Ihsan is a spiritual coach committed to spiritual awakening within the Muslim community and beyond. He is the creator of several leading-edge coaching and online educational programs designed to cultivate greater awareness, spirituality, and success. You can learn more at his website, ihsanalexander.com. And you are listening to the Soul of Islam radio podcast. It is a weekly program dedicated to sharing the deeper dimension of Islam and supporting your personal growth and spiritual development. I am Ahmed, and I am here with my good friend and brother, Ihsan. Allahumma salli ala Sayyid Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyid Muhammad. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanu rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Soul of Islam Radio. This is Ihsan, and it's an absolute joy and pleasure to be joining you, Ahmad, and all of our listeners throughout the world. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today's podcast is on one of the five fundamental pillars of Islam known as as salat with Allah's inspiration and guidance, we will attempt to unravel the beauties, realities, and purpose of this daily practice. Inshallah, we will also touch upon the importance of salat for those who walk the path of selflessness and spirituality, as well as the connection of salat with our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bismillah rahman rahim This is an extremely important topic. Because as pretty much everybody knows, one of the fundamental practices for a Muslim is the daily salah, which often is translated as the daily prayers, the five daily prayers. However, prayer may not be an accurate translation of what salah actually means. When we think of the quintessential Islamic spiritual practice, immediately salah comes to mind. It is the most obvious expression and manifestation of Islam not just in its practical and cultural meaning or experience, but really in its deepest spiritual reality. Given that we as Muslims are advised, suggested, or required to experience the Salah five times daily, it becomes extremely important to understand what Salah actually is and how to properly experience its benefits. Salah is a deeply spiritual experience, not just a physical one. And in this episode, we're going to go into a lot more detail as to the depth, the meaning, the history, the purpose of Salah, and how to experience it, inshallah ta'ala, in a way that continually increases your depth, your immersion, and your benefit in the experience. Now, as we know from previous Soul of Islam radio episodes, that when we dive into the richness of the Arabic language, we come to find divine meanings and secrets that ultimately point back to the source. We have also seen the connection between roots and their derivations. Now, the English translation of as-salat that most of us are familiar with is prayer. And this very translation is incorrect. Now, even though that prayer in English, in the English language, refers to an invocation or some sort of divine communion, at its heart, it is a way to communicate with Allah. And in our Islamic tradition, this method of communication is called dua, to pray for something, to call upon Him in praises or in thanks. So if anything, dua would be the closest thing to prayer in English. And what about Salat? To answer this very question, we must go back to the roots, literally. The root word for as salat is composed of the three letters Sad, Lam, Ya, which if pronounced as would simply mean connection. In other words, 
Salat, one of the five pillars of Islam, is an act of worship, but at its heart, it is a method of connecting the human soul with the divine source. So what we practice are essentially five daily connections, and not prayers. Even though we can invoke prayers or dua or adiyya in our salawat or connections. And from this perspective, it becomes a little clearer as to what it is we do when we orient ourselves in the direction of the Kaaba. We do it to connect. Salat is a connection. Unlike any physical connection we make with our wireless devices or satellites, it is a connection that transcends physical space and time. It is a connection that allows us to move faster than the speed of light. Through this divine connection, we can send and receive. We can send our prayers, our praises, our thanks, our recitation of His words to unlock divine secrets that allow us to receive guidance, love, mercy, light, wisdom, knowledge, inspiration. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam May peace and blessings be upon him. Ascended on the night of Isra and Mi'raj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him to teach his people the five daily connections so that the human mind can unplug itself fully from the matrix we call the universe and plug itself with what is real. A salah is literally a gift from heaven. As Ahmed mentioned, it was given as a practice to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when he was in Laylatul Isra wal Miraj in the Divine Presence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Al Isra wal Miraj, the Miraj symbolizes the human being's connection to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That event which takes place on the 27th night of Rajab Al Isra wal Miraj represents the transcendence of the world of form, the transcendence of dunya, the transcendence of time and space, the transcendence of physicality altogether, and the awakening of the soul in the divine presence of Allah. Salah was so important, so vital, so critical to a human being's connection to Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw it fit to give it as a gift to the Prophet وسلم, in the divine presence. When Rasulullah was in the presence of Allah, Allah gave Salah as a gift to his ummah. Our power, our strength, our light, our life comes from our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah initially, when He prescribed the Salah to the Prophet وسلم, to symbolize, to signify its importance, prescribed 50 Salah daily. Not five, but 50. And then of course, as you know the story of Isra al-Miraj, the Prophet وسلم, went and spoke with the other prophets and ultimately it was changed by Allah to five with the barakah of 50 prayers, of 50 salah. But why 50? If we had 50 salah on a daily basis, would we be doing anything else? We would literally be spending most of our time in, in salah, in connection, in meditation. And that is exactly what we're supposed to be doing. That's exactly the way we're supposed to be living, in continual connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dunya, this world that we find ourselves in, this world of form, this world of physicality, is a world of ghafla, it's a world of heedlessness, it's a world that brings us and lulls us into sleep and unconsciousness. Salah is a form of pattern interruption. It interrupts that hypnotic experience that dunya tries to pull over us to making us think that this world is real and that this is the ultimate reality. Five times per day we interrupt the spell of dunya and seek to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to awaken to connect our hearts with Allah Almighty and to awaken and remember. It is the human heart that can connect to Allah, not the mind. Hence, the salah must be experienced not just through the mind, not just through the body, but through the heart and soul, through the entirety of our beings. In Miraj, when the Prophet ﷺ ascended to the Divine Presence, there was what they attained to, what they reached to, known as Maqam al-Jibreel where Jibreel salam could go no further. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, you must go alone. If I go further, I will be annihilated. My light will be annihilated in Allah's presence. That is known as the maqam al-aql, the, the limit of the human mind, the limit of mind altogether. It cannot go any further. To attain this connection to Allah, salah is the key. And the key to salah is experiencing it fully, completely, with the entirety of our beings, with our heart, with full immersion, full experience. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in a hadith qudsi, 
Neither the heavens nor the earth can contain me except the heart of the believer. Al-Qalb al-Mu'min. Your heart is the doorway into Allah's divine presence. And through Salah, through the perfection and excellence of Salah, we can progressively develop a connection to Allah's light and presence, a connection to Rasulullah sallallahu that becomes our source of strength, our source of light, our source of power, our source of barakah and grace in life and in akhirah. This continual connection to Allah is the goal of Salah, and it's the goal of Islam. As the Prophet sallallahu described in the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, the ultimate goal of Islam being to attain maqam al-ihsan, the state of excellence or perfection, spiritual excellence in the Divine Presence, continually aware of Allah's imminence, of Allah's presence, continually connected to Allah's Divine Presence. And this is also the goal of Islam, which is known as taqwa, to be in a state of God consciousness. Salah is the key, and it is a divine gift from Allah that was given in its perfection to Rasulullah sallallahu Previous nations had also their spiritual prayer practice, but its perfection was revealed to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu with the Holy Quran. By taking a mindful and present approach to Salah, the Salah becomes a perpetual alignment of our beings with the Divine Presence. We are facing Qibla, which means the direction to the House of Allah, continually reminding us, emphasizing that the focus of our lives must be the divine presence of Allah, that our lives revolve around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, around the divine presence, around our connection to Allah. If we lose that connection, we lose everything. And salah is not just a mindless or a physical practice. It's not just a ritual, and it certainly is not just simply an obligation. It is a gift from Allah given to us to connect to His divine presence. And just as we are physically facing the qibla, Internally, we must be facing towards the Divine Presence. Our hearts must be connected. Our hearts must be aligned. This is why Imam Malik said, it is vital, it is essential to experience, to practice both the inner and the outer dimensions of Islam, the fiqh and the shari, as well as tasawuf and tazgiyah. The fiqh teaches us how to pray salah physically, where to place our hands, where to place our feet, how to make wudu and prepare for the salah, what to recite, the different postures. But it is tasawuf, it is tazgiyah that teaches us how to have our heart in alignment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to wash our heart, how to purify our hearts so that they can be open to receiving the grace and the light of Allah. It is tazgiyah that teaches our hearts how to internally face towards the divine presence of Allah. Now we know from the hadith of Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam the three stages of Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. Surrender, belief, and excellence. And before we can move on to these second and third stages to fully experience them, one must ground the mind and heart in Islam, in the pillars of Islam, with Salat being one of the pillars. You know, we know that any structure, any building with shaky foundations will inevitably fall. And any certainty in achieving perfection at this stage can only be drawn from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, it is up to us to decide what it is we want in the here and now. And the goal, like Brother Hassan said, is taqwa, which is achieved through the station of Hassan, where the mind is fully aware of the divine with every step of the way. So we should aim, we should make it a goal for ourselves, for our minds and hearts to reach the excellence and perfection of the stage of Ihsan with every passing moment. And so the stronger the foundation, the greater the awareness one can cultivate over periods of time. You know, in this world, we move about in absolute darkness after the great fall we have all experienced. We move around blindfolded in the maze we call the world. And the stronger the attachments we have with the world, the less guidance we receive. We inflict it on ourselves. And the five daily connections, the five daily salawat, provide the human soul with divine portals of wisdom, guidance, and light. It structures the life of a human being. It introduces awareness throughout the day. It provides the human mind with an opportunity to turn off the voices of the self and align the heart with the divine frequency. And with consistency, 
with humility, sincerity, and most importantly, patience, one will not only strengthen the pillar known as salat, but one will strengthen the connection between the heart and the mind, and which means that the human being will only strengthen himself. In our holy book of Quran, chapter 2, verse 153, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu shaytan rajim bismillahir rahman rahim Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu Sta'inu bis-sabri was-salati inna Allah ma'as-sabirin Allah mentions the act of salat along with patience. Patience. And He says that He is with those who are patient. Because it is through patience one must be consistent and mindful of the connection. It is through patience that the connection can strengthen. It is through patience that one can draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, we learn more about the importance and the significance of salat from the beginning, the very first ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, of chapter 2. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alif Lam Mim. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون صدق الله العظيم The signs are very clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is direct. In the second ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says that this is a book of which there is no doubt. He presents this holy book and challenges every human being, every human mind, the intellect. And subhanAllah, we have seen over and over that this beautiful book, this beautiful book that is full of light has definitely stood the test of time. Allah said that this book has guidance for al-muttaqeen, for those who have taqwa. So right in that ayah, he mentions those people who have achieved the station of ihsan, the third stage, from which one can cultivate the taqwa, the awareness. He doesn't start with the Muslims. He doesn't start with the Mu'minin, the believers. He starts with the Muttaqin, which are the highest level of Muhsinin. And in the third ayah, subhanAllah, he says, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ SubhanAllah, then he mentions belief. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ Those who have belief, those have not only Surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying the shahada, but those who have actually believed with every action, with every practice. And then subhanAllah, he moves down to a salat, which is one of the pillars of the stages of Islam. Such wisdom, beautiful signs. And if anything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us a portal of infinite possibilities, a portal from which we can be intimate with Allah a portal through which we can be in His Divine Presence as soon as we say Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. We would like to suggest a paradigm shift, a paradigm shift with regards to a salah. We tend to think of a salah as an obligation, as a requirement that we have to perform in order to make Allah happy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not so small and He is not in need of our ibadah or of our actions, of our prayers, of our salah, of nothing. He said, وَمَا خَلَقْنَا جِنِّي وَالْإِنسِي إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I have created the jinn and humanity but for ibadah, but for worship. In the very next verse, Allah speaks about, I am not in need of their sustenance. I do not need them to feed me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is absolutely self-sufficient. There's nothing we can do to change or to add to Allah Almighty. Our, our salah is not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal gave us a salah as a gift for us. We can use it, we can take advantage of it, or we can neglect it. But it's for our benefit, it's to our detriment. It doesn't do anything for Allah Almighty. Remember, Allah said, I was a hidden treasure and wanted to be known, so I created. Allah is the treasure, Allah is the destination, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the goal, the destiny. Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi rajiun. Allah is the hidden gift, the hidden jewel. And through as salah we have the opportunity to draw closer and closer to Allah, to what is real, to what is eternal, to turn ourselves away from dunya, to lessen its grip and its grasp upon our hearts, and to strengthen our connection with eternity, with Allah Almighty. 
to strengthen our connection with Rasulullah Wasallam, the messenger, the doorway into Allah's divine presence. We must begin to think a little bit differently about a salah and to think that we are simply checking off boxes on a to-do list. I've prayed my Fajr, check. Prayed my Dhuhr, check. Prayed my Asr, check. And on and on. And at the end of the day, or at the end of a lifetime, we're going to turn in this balance sheet to Allah and show that we did so many prayers, however heedlessly, but at least we somehow managed to get them done and now we're going to be rewarded for it. There's a better understanding. There's a better way of looking at it. And that is to realize that there is no reward for Salah. Salah itself is the reward. So if we are performing our Salah to be rewarded in some future on a point system or point scale, in some sort of business transaction, we're completely missing the point. Salah is the reward. And its value, its benefit, its barak is experienced when we experience the experience, when we enjoy the experience, when we're actually truly performing a salah with the entirety of our beings, not just our bodies, not just our minds, but our hearts and souls with our full presence, immersion, awareness. Nobody would think that there is a God that would punish them for not doing yoga or for not doing tai chi. These are practices or exercises that at some level have been revealed to humanity for benefit. They provide benefit. But it would be ludicrous for anybody to suggest that they're going to go to hell for not performing Tai Chi or Qigong or yoga. They realize the inherent benefit in the practice and they perform it with joy. They perform it with happiness. In fact, yoga studios are filled. Each class is full. People paying anywhere from 10 to 20 to $30 per session to attend a yoga practice. People are paying to experience yoga for the benefit that they know it's going to provide to them at some level physically, mentally, as well as spiritually. And yet we are placing less value on as which was revealed to humanity in the divine presence of Allah, which is in reality an experience of the highest and most beautiful form of yoga and Tai Chi and Qigong and every other practice put together. It's all in as and it's for our benefit. It's for our well-being, it's for our health, it's for our wellness, it's for our strength. It's for the cultivation of our spiritual energy and our spiritual light, our presence. It's for the transcendence of our beings from this world of form. A salah is analogous to being yoga from the divine presence. We have postures, we have movements, we have recitations, we have breathing, we have alignment. Everything is in there, but we're completely missing the benefit if we're performing salah mindlessly, heedlessly, without its excellence, without its perfection, without intention, without awareness. Our suggestion is to begin looking at salah as a practice that is inherently beautiful, inherently beneficial, that it itself is the reward. Salah is the reward for a salah and to begin enjoying the experience, to begin experiencing the experience, not just simply getting it done. It's never about getting anything done in life. Al-Islam is about the experience. It's about the journey, not the destination. The experience itself is the reward and therein is the doorway and the portal to the Divine Presence in the present moment experience. The manifestations of Allah's attributes are infinite in magnitude. They are timeless and cannot be restricted by anything. Infinity does not lose or gain anything if we add any number to it. It is simply infinity. And in the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His attributes are not affected by our salat. They are not affected, not affected by our connections, by the connections we establish with them throughout the day. And this shows us that our human minds are in need of practicing salat. And subhanAllah, it is because of His mercy and His love that He taught us this beautiful secret through Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, known as salat. He threw us into this universe with a detailed map and a clear set of instructions to find our way home. Alhamdulillah for Islam. Alhamdulillah for Islam. Alhamdulillah for this beautiful way. Alhamdulillah for every verse that has been revealed on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah for sending us our beloved Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to teach us the way, to show us the possibility to show us how we can reconnect back with our source. SubhanAllah. And another beauty or reality of a salat is that it is not only an act of 
worship and a connection, but it is also an act of invocation as well. In chapter 33, verse 56, أَعُوذِ بِاللَّهِ مِشَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He and His angels He and His angels send salawat upon our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam And subhanallah, if you look closely at this verse we see that he uses salat. He says, Inna Allahu wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Now, what we've been talking about up, up until this point is the practice of connecting ourselves with Allah. We practice salat to Allah, towards Allah. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions salat and he brings it in reference to the Prophet. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need our salawat. He doesn't need our connections. We need it more. So how can it be so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Him and His angels, would send salawat upon our Prophet wasalam? And my heart feels that the answer is in the very verse itself. He says, يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي And not يُصَلُّونَ إِلَى النَّبِي SubhanAllah, such a big difference in meaning. When we say, if I say Usalli ila Allah or Usalli lillah, I'm saying that I'm making a connection to him, with him. There is a direction. I'm saying that I am making a connection with a divine power that is above, that is beyond space and time, that is in a higher realm, that is way above me. It reminds me of my position, of my status, of my nothingness. When I say, Ila, usalli ila Allah, or usalli lillah. But subhanAllah, in this verse, Allah says, yusalluna ala nabi. Ala indicates a different direction. It's coming from above, from a higher place. It's coming upon, above Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And because the direction of a salah changes, its reality changes with it as well. When it comes from us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a way for us to reconnect. When it comes from Allah upon the Prophet wasallam, it is a connection filled with light. We know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is our portal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we invoke, when we say, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad, this invocation, this invocation is a way for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish a connection from His realm through the universe, through the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and into our hearts. That is why many scholars, that is why many people on the path have stressed so much importance in this particular invocation. Because at its heart, it is a connection. And Allah says in this ayah too that, Right after, he says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. He doesn't say, Ya ayyuhal ladheena aslamu. He says, the ones who have perfected Islam, who have perfected the pillars, from which is salat, who have perfected those pillars, and have ascended to the next level of iman, those people, those people, if you want to cultivate the beauty, if you want to have that connection, and truly experience the blessings of as salawat then you are free to do so. So with that, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina wa habibana wa imamana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyid Muhammad wa ala Sayyid Muhammad. To truly get the benefit of as-salah, we must begin to cultivate the character, the personality, the spirituality of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we look at even the postures of as-salah, we begin in qiyam, standing, we go into ruku. And then we go into sajda and ultimately into jalsa, sitting. These correspond with Arabic letters. Standing being alif, ruku being ha, sajda being meme, and jalsa, sitting, the letter dal. This spells out Ahmad. This is the reality of the Prophet of Allah wasallam, in the Divine Presence. And the doorway, like Ahmad said, is Rasulullah wasallam.
the doorway to Allah's presence is the Messenger. That is why it is said, inscribed in light upon Arsh al Adim, upon the throne of Allah, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, from pre eternity to post eternity. This is an absolute eternal truth. The doorway to Allah is and always has been a Messenger of Allah, and ultimately it is Rasulullah. The character of the Prophet of Allah was based in humility, in selflessness in surrender to Allah's divine will, in perfection and purity, in internal spiritual excellence, in ihsan. Without tazgiyah, there is no way to experience the reality of salah. Impossible. Without the cultivation of humility, salah becomes devoid of its benefit and could potentially even become harmful if it increases a human being in arrogance and in self-righteousness. Allah is looking towards the hearts, not the forms. The forms are an opportunity to express what is in the heart, but if what is in the heart is deficient, what is the benefit of the form? When we learn to surrender, to tame ourselves, the nafs, the lower self, the psychological self, nafs al-ammara, nafs al-lawama, when we bring these into surrender, into submission, into taslimiyat, then the self morphs, it metamorphosizes, it transforms, it evolves into nafs al-mutma'inna. That becomes our dominant localization of consciousness, the contented, certain, absolute, peaceful, self that is rooted in Allah's divine presence. And that self is not sustained by its appetites, its physical hungers, nor its psychological needs and drives. That self is drawn by the light and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That then becomes our motivation. That then becomes our goal. That then becomes what nourishes and sustains our beings. The light of Allah and the nafs, the self then becomes like the buraq, of Rasulullah Sallallahu Not an animal that is based in the world looking downwards for grass and food and satiation of its physical appetites. Not like a human looking towards creation for its needs, but it becomes a heavenly mount that then carries us into the Divine Presence, a winged steed that then carries us into Allah's Divine Presence. We are then driven by love and by light, true love, love of what is absolute, transcendent and eternal. Our beings then change, our beings then shift to being driven by lower forms of attachment. And the essence of Tazkiyah, the essence of Islam, is surrender, it is submission. And the ultimate surrender and submission is the submission of the entire being of the self and of the self's consciousness, ego consciousness. This is why the apex of a salah is in sajda, when we have the forehead to the ground. And Rasulullah said, we are nearest to Allah, nearest to the Divine Presence when we are in sajda. Meaning that we are closest to Allah Almighty when the mind is surrendered, when the mind is still. And thus we must perform a salah from a place of clarity, from a place of presence. This is why meditation is so important and valuable, muraqaba, because it trains us to get control of our minds, to get control of our beings, to surrender fundamentally to surrender and relinquish all will, to again awaken and tune into the present moment. Meditation is invaluable. It's an invaluable Islamic practice, Islamic spiritual exercise. And hence the Prophet ﷺ said, an hour of contemplation, reflection, or meditation is more valuable than 70 years of worship. If we could attain greater connection, clarity, presence in an hour, it will affect every prayer thereafterwards. We can learn to experience our salah with a little bit more presence with a little bit more immersion, with a little bit more connection. And then the reality, the door, the gift of a salah begins to open. The heart begins to awaken with a salah. It softens with our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It becomes alive with our connection to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is our connection to Allah Almighty, to the Divine Presence, that gives us strength and success. That is where from barakah flows. And the life of the believer is based in barakah. It's based in support from the Divine Presence. When that connection to Allah's Divine Presence is diminished, it's weak, or if it's non-existent, life increasingly becomes a struggle because barakah is not reaching us. We're closing ourselves. We're literally blocking ourselves off from the barakah that is flowing from Allah's Presence to us. This is why in the Adhan, we recite in the call to prayer, Haya ala salah Haya ala al-falah. Come to prayer and come to success. How does Salah lead us to success? A Salah leads us to success both in dunya and in akhirah. 
it leads us to a life based in divine barak and grace. If we look at our technological capacity now, how is it that we're working harder than ever before and we have less time than ever before in human history? There's no barakah. There's no connection to Allah. Humanity needs to rediscover its connection to Allah and to rise above a world plagued with problems created by ego consciousness. Re-establish your prayer. Re-establish your salah. Improve it. Deepen it. Enjoy it. Experience it. It is your lifeline to the Divine Presence. Alhamdulillah, we are all aware of the physical and obviously spiritual benefits of practicing and re-establishing our salat, our daily connections. And inshallah, realizing the importance and reminding ourselves of the significance and the spiritual fruits of establishing this connection called a salat, that we can begin to experience the divine presence with every posture, every recitation, with every breath. There are many scholars and imams and spiritual seekers who have made suggestions on how the human mind can immerse itself into the experience of a salat. But one of the great scholars of Islam, he suggested that, or something that he would practice before he would begin his salat, is that he would force his mind to be in a state of awareness before beginning, before saying Allahu Akbar, and standing before Allah, and realizing that he is about to establish a connection. And then he would take his mind to a different place, where he would imagine the sirat that passes over, over the Jannah and the Nar. And he would imagine himself standing on the edge, on the cliff, and right before him, the angel of death. And this is not to sound like we should feel helpless or have any fear or make it sound like a practice that we should run away from, but rather the fact that he is imagining the angel of death behind him is forcing him to be aware of the moment, of the here and now, to realize that he can transition, that he could leave this world and enter the next realm in this very moment. Because if we were to be in Salat, in a state of Salat, in a state of connection, knowing that this is our last chance to make a connection in this physical world with Allah, we would do everything in our power to perfect it, to perfect every motion, to perfect every word, every recitation, every breath. Establishing the daily connections, having the awareness in Salat with every moment will open portals of divine experiences, portals through which when one's heart could receive light and guidance that he would need in this world, that he would need to reach and attain success, that he would need to reach stations, higher stations, that would draw him nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to acquire positions in this world. And establishing these daily connections are of anything but helpful for the human mind. It forces us to align ourselves with every step of the way. You know, what is taqwa? but being conscious and being aware of every passing moment, of every breath that we take, of every gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in this world. And what better way to do it through salat? Bismillah rahman rahim Here are a few suggestions to help you develop a greater immersion and experience to develop greater presence in your salah. Number one, begin with your intention. Like Ahmed was saying, spend a few moments to become aware of what you're actually going to do and to cultivate an awareness of intention before you even make takbir. Begin with awareness, begin with intention, begin with consciousness. And as you perform your salah, be with your breath, relax, allow your breathing to sink and to deepen, enjoy the experience. Do not rush through the experience. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ajala min shaitan, rush is from shaitan. Enjoy the experience. Remember, the experience is the reward. Become mindful of your posture, your alignment, your placement. And as you go through the movements, do so slowly. Do so with presence. Experience the movement. Realize that you are moving through physical space. Remain connected to your breath and to your breathing. Be mindful of your connection to the earth through your feet and legs. Be aware of your connection to the heavens through your head, 
through the crown of your head and use your recitations, the adhkar, that are recited in the salah as opportunities to go deeper into the experience. Enjoy the experience more than anything. Enjoy the experience. Additional suggestions would include aromatherapy such as scented oils and atar to help increase immersion and awareness of the experience, maybe incense, scented candles, a clean and pleasant place to pray, spiritual clothing and attire, appropriate lighting, and of course, taking advantage of salah in jama'ah, praying in congregation. This will amplify your intention, especially if you are part of a spiritual congregation that seeks to perform salah with presence that understands its value. As an additional practice, it is extremely valuable to begin learning how to meditate if you are already not meditating. Learn how to still the mind, to be present, to allow your breathing to deepen. Meditation is the ultimate practice of learning to master the self and to surrender the will. It is Islam at a very fundamental level. It is the relinquishing of all resistance and the awakening to present moment experience. If you are not yet meditating, begin meditating. The Prophet ﷺ was meditating in Ghara Hira up until the age of 40 and beyond when he first received Al-Wahid revelation. He was going deeper and deeper into himself, establishing his connection with the Divine Presence, seeking truth through the access, through the center of his own being, through his heart. And then when the time was right, Jibreel ﷺ brought to him the very first verses of Al-Quran, Quran al karim May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you support you and strengthen you in your spirituality and in your spiritual practice. May He, Azawajal, strengthen your connection to His Divine Presence and your love for His beloved Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam. And may Allah Almighty inspire and awaken this Ummah, our community, to again embrace deeply the spirituality of this path, to embody the spirituality of Islam, to be anchored in the Divine Presence so that humanity again Seize the true light, the beauty, the excellence, the perfection of Al Islam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyid Muhammad wa ala Sayyid Muhammad. And with that, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. And subhanAllah, this brings us to the end of yet another episode. Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah for his inspiration, for his knowledge, for his wisdom. Thank you, the listeners, for tuning in and for supporting the Soul of Islam radio podcast. And please continue supporting the Soul of Islam radio by subscribing via iTunes on our website, soulofislamradio.com. Contemplation and reflection are some of the gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the human heart. And beginning and ending our daily connections with reflection, contemplation, and meditation is very crucial in bringing our hearts or bringing our minds in alignment with the spirit that resides inside of our hearts. So to cultivate that awareness, to draw your heart closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state of meditation, please visit islamicmeditation.com. And to learn more about us and our projects, you can visit my website at ahmedsakamini.com and Ihsan's website at ihsanalexander.com. And with that, may the peace, the mercy, the blessings, and the light of the divine be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.